call to order. Do I need to do anything for roll call? I've got it. I've got everybody. Um, do we have any public to be heard? Where's the public? I don't know. <laughs> No, I missed the one person. I'm the one who told them to come, and then I wasn't here last time. Oh. I, so I was like, yeah, you can come. You can. He was so excited. So I was like, oh. did, did that guy, remember the guy who came who was, uh, he plays the... Yeah, from November. Yeah, he, yeah. I met him at an art incident. Yeah. And he was so enthusiastic, and he's like, I wish I could do more things at the museum. And I was like, what? Well, the board meeting's open. Well, he said he was going to apply for a vacant seat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, you know, we're looking for, and he fit the bill beautifully. Oh, yeah, he, I've met him multiple times. Yeah, he would be great. Yeah. Great. yeah. April, I think, would be the next time we have recruitment. April. Oh, okay. Can't just wait to get more people. Um, and then, has everyone had a chance to look over um, the minutes, and it is from the November 15th, correct? Anyone have any corrections, questions? Can I get um, a movement to approve? Kathleen, is there a second? Bruce, anyone all in favor? Raise your hands. We're ready for sessions. So do I usually my first time doing this, so... Uh, so yes, welcome. I think uh, or... everyone get a chance to meet Elizabeth, our new curator yes. of history. Um, so yeah, basically the, the process usually is talk a little bit about each of them, and then, you know, either, you know, up to you whether you want to have people hold questions to the end or ask them after each accession. Um, sure. We'll just ask after each accession. How about that? This and Eric a, tries used to try to keep it to at least forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, our first one is our largest grouping of objects. Um, there's a whole box of letters. Uh, I opened and read a couple of them. Uh, they are mostly relating to Charlotte Beckwith and Eli Zane Mills. I think there is a family connection there. Uh, a lot, almost all of them are stamped Longmont. Uh, any that seem to have absolutely nothing to do with Longmont, we did not keep. Um, the photo that I believe is Charlotte Beckwith, and I cross referenced that with some other things in our is not in this photo, but um, I'm pretty sure it's her, so we're going to take that. Um, and then I believe it's the daughter of William Wright is the one who gave yeah, us this. Darling. And so he's the photographer of these. Um, <clears throat> photos from the 1980s, so one of a barn, um, a ro and the rodeo, and the fairgrounds. Any questions? God, you know, the 1980s sounds like it's uh, such a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Are the letters dated? Like one of the yeah, letters Yeah, the letters are all around from the first decade of the 19th century, or the 20th century. They're a little boring. <laughs> They're like kind of about what they shopped for and what the weather was, but they seem, you know, they're from Long Long, so I thought yeah. you know, that might as well. Any other questions? All right. This one was really fun when it came in um, parks and Natural resources, their department, I guess this was hanging on their wall for many years, it sounds like, or they had it in storage. Uh, an aerial photo, it is in the archive right now. It is quite large, 37 by 37, of the city in 1978. Uh, Main Street slash 287 is right here. Um, and then you have Union Reservoir, so it's kind of the eastern side of town. And the museum would, is like, I think, in this field. Now, <laughs> any questions about this one? Does it note the uh, population? It does not. It does not. It does have a date on it. It's just from 1978. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we could cross reference what the sure. population was. Sure. Sure. And about 40,000. And what is it now? About a hundred thousand? hundred thousand. Yeah. 
I guess one thing to note is that Skyline High School is under construction. I think it's this mm -hmm. area right here is kind of like a dirt pit. And the area around the Fox Hill Golf Club is sort of being built up as well. Nice. Uh, the sugar factory is still in operation. <laughs> yeah, right? I think that's uh, it. 78 would have just closed. The year closed in 77. It would have closed in some, uh, 77 it yeah. closed? Yeah. Huh. <coughs> that must have been a big blow. Economic. What's a big deal? Yeah. On top of a time of high inflation, right? <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. Any other called They call it stagflation. <laughs> That's what they call it in the late 70s. Right, so the next one, um, this one came in really randomly with a cookbook that belonged to your husband's family. Um, your husband is related to Johannes Nelson, um, who is a Swedish immigrant and is buried at the Visby Church. Uh, this is a, I, we do have one of these already, but I feel like we can't have enough because it is direct Longmont um, connection, has ads from local businesses like the Golden Moon Store, and written recipes on the cover, and then the recipes on the inside are like submitted by you know, Mrs. Martin. Um, lots of last names and streets around town. Uh, no date on this. Um, Eric, did you have any idea roughly what the date of this would be? Um, let's see, if it was golden rule, that means it's between like 1895 and about 1910. Um, be able to pin it down a little more. But was it, what was the front cover? It just said recipe. <laughs> it's kind of so these coffee. are Swedish recipes. No, these were no. Uh, submitted by locals, oh, by local um, and then printed out, interspersed with local ads for local businesses. So we could probably find a short, shorter-lived business oh. and probably figure out the date. Well, that's probably there. pretty interesting. But it didn't have like a copyright date stamped on the cover, unfortunately. And that's it. That's all we got. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would that be? Yeah, we accept. One yeah. second. I'm going to give you a little vote. Do you think that was unanimous? Okay. Let's see. Does everybody have a printed director's report? Um, did you put it on Teams or? Um, um, you might be able to pull up your email. Mm, Let's see, that would be. Oh, who's, who's oh. on? Because Elizabeth is logged in. Oh, anyway, you copy? I'll, um, I've got a copy. Okay. Just, if anybody else needs a copy, I'll just go through. I'll hit a few highlights. Um, so under administration, we awarded the contract for the courtyard renovation. So that is the first kind of public phase of a museum expansion. Uh, Cushy construction, um, 1.375 million. Uh, met with them earlier this week. They're gonna start actual construction early next week. Um, and the contract uh, calls for it to be done by May. Um, so we will cross our fingers that that happens. Um, but uh, it's exciting to have the, kind of the first phase of our expansion project underway. Public phase. Can you can you just remind us uh, what that entails? So this uh, the courtyard will be expanded. So right now we can hold about three hundred and fifty people for our summer concert series. We're going to move the fence out and um, create a new performance pavilion that will be south and west, the southwest corner of uh, the expanded fenced area. So our architects estimate we can hold about 700 for uh, summer concerts. 
We're also going to uh, pave the innermost portion of the courtyard. So right now, when we get any kind of heavy rain, that area just sort of becomes a swamp, which makes it not terribly good for a lot of programs throughout the summer. Um, so we're gonna pave that so that hopefully it'll be more used and also potentially available for rentals as well. Um, uh, and then with the larger fenced area, we'll be able to also use that for outdoor uh, use by our summer camp programs. Mm. They currently have this temporary corral fence um, that encloses an area outside of the regular fence. We'll be able to have basically everything inside, inside the main museum fence. So it'll be a lot more functional for the um, summer camps as well. So, yeah. um, if things go perfectly, we'll be available for summer camps this summer, um, but we're also, we have alternate plans if you know, things don't go perfectly, we'll continue to have summer camps and summer concerts, just not in the courtyard. Sometimes. Um, all right, under exhibits, um, a week from this Friday, we'll be opening uh, Picturing the West, uh, which is 19th century Western landscape photography um, that we have supplemented with um, works by women and indigenous uh, artists um, uh, from that time period or a little bit later. So we're very excited by that uh, by that show. It's it's going up right now in the gallery, and um, it will run uh, from the twenty sixth uh, through early May. So chance don't aren't going to be here on Friday night, the twenty sixth, for the opening uh, to see it uh, through early May. And feel free to bring folks down. It's it's got some very well known. Photographers, uh, William Henry Jackson, that did a lot of photographs in Colorado. Edward Muybridge, who was, uh, you know, oh, I know uh, that story. Cal yeah. California. Um, Carlton Watkins, who took photos across the country. There's um, about a dozen or so photographers. Um, and the photographs are very large. They're what they're called mammoth plate photos. If you're not aware, in the 19th century, to um, print a photograph, you had to have a negative the same size mm -hmm. as the print. So we actually, Elizabeth has found a, a camera from History Colorado that is weighs 100 pounds, that shows how huge those cameras were that they had to uh, take the negatives that then they turned into the, the prints that we're gonna see. Yeah, these really straight film box cameras on scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I know my son had, when he was studying, had to do large and medium format. And they were the, the big babies with large cameras. Yeah, yeah. So these, the, these sound like huge. These, um, some of them are 16 inches by 20 inches. So okay. imagine, yeah. okay. imagine the size of a neg you know, glass yeah. negative that size. Um, yeah. Did they have film? Were they kind of a silver print? The negatives? Uh, the negatives were, were actually glass. They were glass. They were actually panes um, of glass, yeah. and they would coat them with the chemicals, and so, then they had about 15 minutes to get them in the camera, get them exposed, and, and then uh, they would usually bring with them a portable dark room for them, uh, develop them out in the field. So it was quite a process. Do you have any other cancel ads or anything? Because I know there was a show up in what, Loveland? Uh, not, not in this show. Uh, okay. These are a little bit earlier uh, photographers, more okay. like uh, 1860s to 1880s. Okay. All right, we will move on to um, auditorium programming. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a note that we set records this year for ticket sales, mm -hmm. rental revenue, and concession sales. So uh, in these areas, we're definitely recovering well from, from the COVID years. That's a good sign. Um, and under education, 
I will just note that um, we have basically doubled our art and sip programs. So we had usually one every Thursday night. Um, we now are adding two. We're adding uh, a second art and sip. So we're doing a 4 p.m. and a 6 p.m. art and sip. That's great. Does um, it sell out so fast? Yes, yes. So uh, now there's a little more opportunity for more folks to uh, uh, experience the art and sip. And we've actually brought in a new uh, instructor who will be leading a lot of those art and sip classes and is actually now a museum staff member. So uh, we'll be able to have a lot more flexibility in, in future art and sips because we'll have multiple staff members that can lead those rather than having to find a contractor or a speaker. Mm -hmm. That's good. And she's the owner of Baker Journal? Um, Joanne, do you know? At least so. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Under collections, as I mentioned, uh, Elizabeth is coordinating some loans of antique cameras that will uh, be on display with the picture in the West exhibit. Uh, so check that out. And, um, skip ahead to development. Um, we received a $40,000 grant from the Gates Family Foundation. It's the largest foundation grant outside of the Stewart Family Foundation that we've received for this campaign. So we're very, very delighted with that. And hopefully that will lead to additional gifts in the future from the Gates Family Foundation. In case you're wondering, no, it's not the Bill Gates of, of Microsoft. This is actually Gates Rubber, uh, which is a Denver company. And I think the final thing that I will mention is you should have gotten uh, in the mail the new program catalog from the museum. It's got all of our uh, spring programs in it. There is a ton going on, films, concerts. It's got all of our art and sips, um, some of our presents, uh, special events. We've got a uh, play called Love Letters and two silent films by uh, Montauco Motion Picture Orchestra, um, Friday Afternoon Concert Series, and the Boulder International Film Festival. So, yes. Lots going on at the museum. Any questions on the director's report? All right, so this is kind of the last piece of our strategic planning process. Uh, when we originally met to uh, do our strategic plan, uh, we looked at our mission statement and felt like, yes, it very much still tells what we do as an institution. Um, but then we looked at our vision statement, and the current vision statement is the Longmont Museum fosters a community that is culturally educated and creatively inspired. And we, as a staff, kind of were talking about, well, this seems a little top down. It's, the museum is doing this to the community. And we wanted something that was a little more collaborative. You don't want to victimize um, the community. Right, right. <laughs> um, and it also just seemed like it's a bit of a mouthful, maybe not, not the best constructed. Um, so we had a subcommittee work on developing a new vision statement um, and then ultimately at a staff meeting kind of uh, did the final wordsmithing. So the one that we are proposing that would then sort of be included in our new strategic plan and any other places where we need a vision statement would be the Longmont Museum aspires to be our community's home to share collective experiences and diverse stories. Mm -hmm. So we 
We like that it talked about diversity. We like that it talks about stories, and you know, yeah, rather than uh, being a top down, it's you know we are we are the home where people come together to uh, share experiences and stories. So, um, I'm bringing it to you all for uh, discussion and hopefully adoption. Say that again. <laughs> uh, the Longmont Museum aspires to be our community's home to share collective experiences and diverse stories. And I meant to email you, but I got distracted with some other things. I was going to look up, just out of curiosity, what the libraries. Um, vision state. Do you know offhand? I don't know. I just offhand. wondered if there was any similarities or anything to that one. But, you know, doesn't mean that they can't be similar. Mm -hmm. if, if indeed they meant to. Uh, no plagiarism. <laughs> no, we, we did not uh, <laughs> steal this. It's we did all not create news, it with uh, chat GTP. <laughs> We did look at a lot of other vision uh, statements did, and get some get some ideas yeah. from them, yeah. but uh, uh, this one kind of came out of a lot of staff discussion. So. I didn't find it. Actually. Yeah, I mean, I would move that they adopt it. Okay. Second. Okay. Universally approved to adopt the new vision. Um, do we have any other board comments? I just had a comment. I'm sure we've all been thinking about it. As we do have, I think, what, four vacancies on the board? Three, Three. Three right now. So, uh, as I'm sure we've all thought about this, do we know any friends or relatives <laughs> that we think would be good oh, that would be nepotist. <laughs> well not with friends so much. <laughs> yeah and as long as it's not probably a direct relative right <laughs> uh, there were you know mother father spouse children uh, whoever else is included in that wow i think recruitment starts in april so so they're not collecting applications yeah. yet, yeah. Mm -hmm. but certainly as soon as the city clerk's office starts the recruiting process, we're going to be sending it out widely, and we'd love for you to distribute that with your acquaintances. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. I have a friend who applied to be on this board a few years ago, and she was not accepted. I don't know if she's still interested. Cynthia, her last name, she, she oh, owns uh, a horse suit. Yeah, Sechi. Is she oh, out of incarceration yeah. by now? <laughs> <laughs> but she's a small business owner and she was here yeah. to start this up. Hmm. Well, I, yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. said they've yeah. had uh, more applicants than positions, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that must have been a and rare. Lives, and she lives in Longmont. Yeah, she properly. owns a historic house mm -hmm. on the east side. And is a textile artist. Yeah, she owns a historic, like a corset company. So she, apparently they're the best, most historically accurate corsets you can get. Oh, you can always call me and say April. <laughs> she also has like thousands and thousands of followers on Instagram. So yeah, that would be good. <laughs> she knows how to use Instagram. She ask her to see if she'd be interested because of the openings and she has a better chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll mention it. Yeah, you absolutely. Guys and, and especially now, because um, I think when she applied the last time, it was city council just basically did the interviews and there wasn't really any way for us to like say, you know, these are the people we think would be really great additions to the board. Um, but uh, now it's actually this board that does, does the interviews. So um, it's a lot better opportunity for folks that are really involved in the museum. I know I've seen uh, Cynthia at a number of the museum events. So. That would be good. Tell me that. She has a really good chance. Great. Nice. And we need to reach out to that young man. Yeah. 
and, and let him know he's got to put in something to get home because he'd really be full. Yeah. Really would be. Yeah. And I think he shared. Just his contact information and yeah. make yeah. sure to share that when yes. it's time mm -hmm. then. Um, we don't have any other comments. Does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Is there a second from that? So we'll go on.